Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Sanders from the CICMQ program. Uh, I'm welcome everyone to the 84th uh, CICMQ Zoom session, um, which is now opened up to the wider uh, CICM community, specifically uh, those operational credit managers that have had a desire to listen to Tarmac talk about their um, amazing journey last year, CICMQ, and what they've been doing as an organization. I, um, I welcome everybody. We have a cast of thousands on today, which is fantastic. Let me um, just uh, uh, share my screen now so that we can all see uh, and I will hand over very shortly to, uh, to Karen right so uh, if you can see that can you see that or not can you see the slide deck yes you should be able yeah. to see the slide deck okay so if, you, if um, to make it easy for me um, if you can see the slide deck just uh, very quickly put your thumbs up Great, everybody can see it, that's good news. Okay, um, so I um, I will uh, hand over to Karen Chiosh and Lisa McKenzie. I'll be driving, um, so when you want to uh, move on a slide, just say, um, Chris, do your thing or whatever. <laughs> so off you go. Okay. Do your thing then, Chris, put us on the next slide. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so hi everyone, and, and, and thank you for giving us some time here today to, to talk about the Tarmac story. The the past year or two has been a, a, an amazing time for us, not without its challenges for sure, um, but we've learned so much about ourselves, our business, uh, our team, and we've made incredible strides forwards in terms of uh, our ways of working and uh, performance and results. So you take us to the next slide, Chris, please. So 2020, um, has I'm sure been a, a particularly intense time for all of us on this call. Uh, for me, it felt like it went by in a flash. Um, I know we've all probably um, without doubt felt the impacts of the challenges presented by COVID, uh, the uncertainty of the Brexit outcomes, um, the environment that's created for us as credit professionals to, to operate in. Um, but in the midst of this, um, incredible time, I guess, we've, we've moved ourselves forward to, to a really unreal place in terms of cash management and age debt. And we are now sustaining those results uh, month on month. Uh, the changes we've made to get ourselves there have, have now become just the way that we do things. Um, so we're not letting go of those in any way. We're going to talk to you a little bit more through the course of this session about what it is that we've actually done. Um, but the, the other highlight for us it, and the icing on the cake for us uh, in terms of 2020 was uh, CICMQ and uh, we were really proud to get our accreditation in November. Um, our original uh, CICMQ assessment was actually, it was scheduled to take place in, in, in March um, on the week that the first COVID lockdown was, was actually, was announced by Boris. Um, so we were gutted that week to find that, that we'd done a lot of work for that and, and the rug was pulled uh, the week it was, it was happening. So with everything that went on last year, it was actually October before we got to go through, through the assessment again. Um, but we, we got there and it certainly was for the team. I know the team are really proud of, uh, of the achievement um, in terms of getting, getting the accreditation at the end of last year. Now, we chose the, um, the workshop approach to gaining our accreditation. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about why we, what we did around that and, and why we did it. Um, but before we do that, if we just move to the next slide, I wanted to talk more about why, why CICMQ and why it was important to us uh, at this time. Um, because our journey with CICMQ actually started back end of 2019, and it was in actually November 2019 that, that Chris uh, came along and did the, um, the kickoff session with our team. And we did our cash challenge as part of all that in the December, at, at our financial year end, December 2019. Um, but in stepping back a little bit, first of all, in 2018, um, when I uh, came back to the team and we um, uh, we're re-establishing ourselves, um, we began a journey, uh, a bigger journey. So a journey around team development, process improvement, stakeholder management, and, and looking at improvements to, to service delivery. Uh, we're still on that journey, um, but CICMQ was a, a, a significant milestone for us. It's given us a platform for our, for our future development. You know, we don't stop here. Um, <clears throat> there's more that we have uh, 
more ambitions that we have planned for ourselves. Um, and definitely it's been an important part of our uh, roadmap, giving us the uh, opportunity to, to improve what we do and to, to build and develop capability within the team and to nurture uh, what we'd started with, with the team. Uh, if we move on, Chris. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, when we first started talking to Chris about uh, uh, how we go about gaining our accreditation and, and considering where we were on our own journey at, at that time, um, as I said, we decided to take the workshop approach to things. And, you know, why, why did we do that? The main driver to that really was that we knew that to succeed at this, we needed the team um, to come with us, to be with us all the way through it, and to be driving the ideas forward and to be to be involved. We'd come from um, maybe a culture of where where it was more imposed ways of working, or, or you know, a uh, um, a comfort zone around how things had always been been done. So our team were already familiar with. Um, continuous process improvement and we, we've got in our wider shared service centre we've got something called idea the I, ideas log uh, and a process improvement mission team so uh, we already had members involved in that uh, and the wider team uh, quite used to feeding our ideas into that but maybe where what we hadn't had previously before before we started all this was um, the team actually involved in, in the planning and the delivery of the, the solutions. Um, historically, you know, they might have fed ideas in and, and then it would go to management and management would decide how we would do things and, and, and how things were going. Um, so, so with this approach, the, um, the working groups were formed as, as part of our, our kickoff session with, with uh, Chris and um, you know, through the, the team's choices, we had the right people in the right work working groups. Um, and, you know, from day one, from that, the engagement was there and the ideas were flowing. So um, mm. a lot was achieved out of those workshops and put some icons on that slide for you. I'm not going to go through all of those, but definitely, um, definitely all of those working groups were, were successful and we're looking at the moment in terms of how we take those, those forward in 2021. Um, another important part of our, our accreditation route was the cash challenge at the end of the financial year. I'm gonna to hand to Lisa now to talk you through um, what we did at the end of December, 2019. Okay, next one please, Chris. So, the Circle of Strife 2019, where did it all start? It started with our unachievable target. For those of you that have been through the cash challenge route, you set that unachievable target, which for us was 360 million. Um, ideas from the team, what does 360 mean? Okay, 360 degrees, a circle. Somebody started singing um, the Circle of Life, Elton John. We then, or the team then developed that into the circle of strife and there it began. So completely random, but that started us off on the right path that whilst it was challenging, we need to be engaging and have fun along the way. So ideas from the team were absolutely flowing and fabulous, as I would say, turning our cash challenge into the office of a Lion King jungle. So everyone else around us had all the Christmas trees, the decorations. I think we had on the other side, the Polar Express. Um, but we had the jungle and needless to say, we had quite a few curious visitors, which to be honest, was actually really good for the whole engagement piece with our business, you know, curiosity, let's see what's going on in credit control and let's help them out in their cash challenge. So super, super idea. The cash challenge for us, so in terms of the working groups, not all our team were actually involved at that time in the CICMQ. But one thing that we wanted to do during the cash challenge was actually engage the whole team. So every member of our team was involved in a working group in the various elements to come up with their ideas. Every idea to us is obviously very valuable. 
me on I look after the um, AR side for our materials business so we changed a lot of ways of working we delivered one ledger so for, for you guys out there a lot of our team look and work on manual individual spreadsheets so we bought it all together so we'd all got a holistic view of everything that was going on we flexed our resource which was fabulous. We'd got our cash allocations team when they were a bit quiet and they'd allocated all the payments all nice and tidy. Um, they were picking up the phone and helping us call customers for cash, which was absolutely great. One important thing that we did, um, I think when we look at the approach and you're actually, as a, as a manager, you're kind of thinking, I'm asking my team to deliver more. And Christmas, he's three, well, we're three weeks working. So I think we had about 15, 16 days. So we're trying to get around that psychology of you're asking me to do more. So what we actually did is create a don't do list. So come on, guys, think about think about the things we can park for December in Cash Challenge. Think about the things you don't need to do. And let's just focus on the real stuff that we do predominantly obviously calling customers and getting our cash in. So we had lots and lots of running games. So um, virtual prizes issued. Um, we had quizzes every Friday. We all wore t-shirts and lovely animal headbands as you will see shortly. Um, so we had a really good vibe and a fun vibe to support that and keep it going. So on to the next one, Chris, please. Okay, I'm going to hit, hit record and um, play. Um, you should be able to hear this. I've got the volume up as loud as possible. So fingers crossed you'll be able to hear it. Okay. We're here in the Cash Collections District, home to the tenacious and committed creatures whose sole existence is centred on seeking and obtaining the elusive cash. The SSC Serengeti is tough this time of year. It's all paused to the deck phones and screens to make sure the best possible cash-in outcome is achieved. <laughs> Let's meet some of the team working hard in this circle of strife. Hello, I'm Neil. I work in the cash collections business for Cement and Lime. Looking forward to working very closely with customer service and sales. So we have a very good December and year-end and excellent cash collection. Hi, I'm Lisa McKenzie, Accounts Receivable Manager for the Materials Business. December is super important to us for cash collection because we have to collect the most we ever do in a year in the shortest time, like we've got 15 days. So we really need your help. If you get the call from me or one of my credit controllers, please help us out with your customers not paying as cash is critical all year, but especially at Christmas. <laughs> Okay, so next one, please, Chris. Yeah, so needless to say, um, for the month of December, I had a six foot giraffe looking over my shoulder every day, which we became quite good friends. So yeah, in the jungle, the mighty jungle. So what happened in December? What, what were our experiences? And what I would say is obviously week one, the lions woke up, there was a real roar, there was a real buzz about what we wanted to do. So daily huddles, getting the teams together, engaging on, you know, everything we needed to cover that day, snappy, inspirational, all the clear goals and expectations and everybody was on it. Okay. Week two, the lions started dozing. So we saw that the team, the contact rates were falling behind perhaps where we needed them to be, promised payments, et cetera. So we kind of got that feel, okay, what do we need to do here? And I do actually remember messaging Chris and saying, yeah, it's going really well, but we're, it's just slowing down a little bit. So we got the team together and said, well, what's the story guys? You know, do you need any help, any support? And when we got to the bottom of it, it was kind of, around the fact that the development of the KPIs that we had, we kind of decided to measure everything and it was complex, it was perhaps confusing. So we took it back and simplified that number. And that number to us was the gap to target. We knew exactly what the target would be, how much we collected so far, what our promised values were. So that was the gap. 
And that gap could be developed real time as and when the guys were getting new promises coming in, updating the board and as simple as a huge sheet in the middle of our huddle board with a red number on. And that was the motivator that took us from, from A to Z really and, and got that, that target for us. Um, had a fabulous result. So the best DSO since 2012 and broke all previous cash records. So yeah, it really did work for us. So thanks the ICM. Um, and I'll explain, to, I'll move on to Karen now to talk about um, what happened in 2020. Yeah, so after all that, we, um, we moved it up a notch. <laughs> so in 2020 came the introduction of Target Zero, um, a massive education and, and behavioural piece for our, well, for our team, for our customers, uh, um, and also for our, our business stakeholders. And essentially, this was all about our expectation that we, um, we need to be paid on full and in time, every time. Um, so no tolerance for any age debt. Um, and that sounds you know, <laughs> unimaginable. And I know that the first time, um, whoever they were, whether it was ourselves, our team, our, our stakeholders or whatever, embraced that concept, everyone told us it couldn't be done. Um, well, yes, it can be done. Um, it did take some selling in for sure. Um, and what it's meant in practice is a, a lot of hard work with our business to get things right first time. So uh, improvements to our, our billing, our dispute management, etc. cetera, a massive education piece with our customers. It's not okay for us to be short paid um, because you haven't processed some of our invoices. Um, uh, and with our team, our team have needed to be a lot more proactive with customers um, and more thorough in their follow-up. Um, massive turning points. We're going to talk more about some of the nitty gritty around what we changed and how we made this work in a set, but a massive turning point uh, in all this turned out to be the introduction of league tables. So we've got weekly league tables. Um, by business area for both age debt and uh, and queries out, queries outstanding and they are discussed and celebrated on a there's a weekly senior um, leadership call that happens on a Friday which is our CEO CFO with um, the, lead, the tarmac leadership team um, so the competitive element of those league tables has been a real a real driving force in terms of helping the momentum towards what we needed to achieve. You know, none of our directors want to be bottom of that league. Um, equally, there's a pride in being a, uh, at the top. So, um, and because our credit controllers were, we, we've got ourselves organized, um, aligned with the business. So, you know, the ledgers that are our credit, the way our ledgers are split for our credit controllers, um, Allow, allows them to be part of that extended virtual uh, commercial team. Um, during this during during this period, we've um, which is really kind of started to take off for us from around May time. Um, we've delivered and sustained a, a massive um, a, a massive cash improvement for our business. So yes, uh, so let's talk about. I'm going to hand to Lisa to talk about um, what we did differently during this time and, and the way that we work now. Okay, so move on, Chris. And Lisa comes back on with a, a great smile on her face because it really is a, a great success that we've had in 2020. So if you consider, and, and this is relevant to all of us, I'm, I'm sure when COVID hit, a huge searchlight beamed on the credit control team so um, almost overnight, we, we went from zero to hero. Um, that engagement that we'd worked so hard to nurture over previous years, albeit really quite slowly, was suddenly switched on and accelerated um, probably quicker than a race car. It really did. Our business was behind us. They were with us. They wanted to know a whole lot more. And I think very quickly, and that put a lot of pressure on, on the management team within credit and also the credit control team. Um, answer straight away, let's get moving, let's get, let's get it sorted and get that cash in. 
um, how did we structure it? So we took a step back and, and Karen obviously spoke there about the senior leadership calls on, on a Friday. Um, Karen and I and the management team, the credit risk managers, were on a daily call with our regional directors and area directors, looking at their particular pockets of debt, where the challenges were, and starting utilising those very valuable commercial relationships that we had in our business. Subsequently, we moved on to daily cash calls with... Um, sorry, the area directors again, and also commercial teams. So we started engaging the commercial teams in that. That then developed, we slowed it down a bit as, as we started finding traction and, and improving and getting where we needed to be. We moved to twice weekly calls with our area directors and regional directors, but also we started building in a network of commercial team calls. And that was for the credit controller, the business admin team, the sales team, all to work to as a collective to go through their overdue debtors and make sure that that cash was churning and was becoming collectible. Our invoice queries, so as, as Karen said, we had a fabulous turnaround in invoice queries. And if I tell you that our invoice query turnaround time prior to COVID and, and back in 2019, was around an average of 30 do, 32 days to resolve an invoice query. I think when we hit mid 2020, we were on around 48 hours. Those queries were in and out. I think one thing that upon reflection and, and still continues, um, the engagement, the collaboration, we've developed a lot of what I would consider to be valuable relationships within our business. Um, we work at that level that just feels like we're one team. It's not an us and them. Um, and we've got, a, got each other's back, you know, to get the job done. So off the back of that, we delivered that, that 40 million improvement in our cash. We do have some areas sitting on zero overdues. In fact, at month end, we've had a few areas in credit balances for their overdue debtors. We just wouldn't have believed it. Um, and zero invoice queries as well. I think for me personally, having to do the month end pack in terms of the reporting, um, it's a case where I run a report and then have to rerun it and then look at the customer records just to double check that the numbers that we have delivered are actually correct because the transformation has really been um, phenomenal. So on the next slide, Chris, I'm going to talk to you about our um, 2020 cash challenge. So in 2020 on the cash challenge, we, we used the same model. We, we used exactly the same structure. So all the different working groups with everybody involved. I mean, I know we, we would have the challenge of not being in that office together. And there was a real concern that we weren't, we, we were not going to get the same vibe the same motivation levels that we had back in 2019. And having had such a cracking year in terms of um, overdue debt reduction, the one month that we really needed to deliver, we were thinking, oh my goodness me, hopefully we won't fail. Um, but the team were with us. And I think one thing that we had at that time was also the business were just so super oiled in what happens in credit control and what they need to do to help us get that cash in for year end, we had that added advantage. So we did simplify the KPIs. So we learned from our lessons of 2019, what do we need to make it work, make it work quick and easy for everybody. So we held virtual huddles. Teams is the best tool ever. I'm sure we all know that now. And of course, Zoom. Um, so virtual huddles. We had quiz nights in December as well. We stopped the bus in the middle of the day in December to have a session on bingo and all the team were involved. So lots of fun and competitions to keep getting us together as a team to make sure we're all still well and we're all still striving for the same thing. So the result of that, our overdues um, at, at year ends, 1% of total ledger value. So superb. And as I've said, some areas in credit that league table really does drive the right behaviours 
and a bit of fun and competition. So both in the areas and, and with the collections teams. So disputes are at virtual zero. We were collect we were carrying 11 million pounds worth of, of invoice queries um, 12 months ago. Now, I think last month end, we ended up at just, just over 50K. So it's a phenomenal change that we've been through and obviously still keep looking at that root cause and the development of those processes has really ha helped and aided the cash collection team. So um, yeah, we had a, a fabulous 2020. So back to Karen now to, to talk about what, what she's got up her sleeve for us this year. <laughs> well, yeah, because because as you know, well, we all know in this game, we're only as good as our last gig. <laughs> Yeah. So you have to keep it coming. You have to keep looking ahead of yourself. And 2021 is already shaping up to be a really busy year for us. Um, we've got a roadmap that we will deliver against um, to keep ourselves moving forward. Uh, challenges around COVID, obviously, we've still got a team that's fully, pretty much fully, well, is at the moment 100% working from home. Um, the expectations of us are high because of what <laughs> what we achieved last year. So now there's um, now there's an expectation that that is every month, uh, and that so first and foremost we need to sustain uh, that level of performance that we've achieved uh, and make sure that we continue to deliver the results for our business um, that that they need us to deliver. But having said that, there's probably um, three or four priority areas for me aside from that that, that feature on our roadmap um, uh, the first one is our people um, so with the support of the CICM um, uh, currently since our accreditation we're working with them to develop a tarmac credit career program um, we're in early stages of that at the minute but we do hope to be in a position to pilot that in early Q2 uh, and as part and parcel of that, that would allow us to embed our skills and training matrices into, into the personal development plans and take, um, take the outputs from that to help us shape what, what this development programme needs to look like. Um, and additionally, you know, as I've alluded to before, for, for now it's been, well, it's not long, far away from coming up to 12 months now since we've had the whole team uh, working remotely from home. So I do want to have more of a think around that in terms of how we make that a, um, a better and more engaging experience. Um, now it appears to be the real, real long-term um, situation for us. Um, aside from the, our people, we've got some um, business related projects that we need to deliver this year. So integrations and uh, standardization uh, projects that, that, will, that will take our time and will need our focus. Um, uh, aside from that, continuous improvement obviously is, is a big strand for us and we are um, currently uh, re-establishing those CICMQ working groups um, to look at further improvements to the way that we work. We've got a track record of doing some in-house developed robotics uh, and AI on some of our key processes. So we want to look at process and uh, further opportunities for technology. Um, we, so we started some work last year to look at how we might um, we might do that around the, actual, the credit controller cash collection process, work prioritisation. So want to pick that up again and, um, and see what mileage we've got in that. Uh, and also uh, for, I guess, probably the last the last kind of key area for me is is around stakeholders. So at the moment, they are living and breathing credit with us. Um, they're totally on the same page as, as Lisa has said. So, so we will need to, um, we want to continue to foster that and no way are we letting that go. No way whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so a uh, busy year, no doubt. And, and I'm sure there's gonna be loads of curveballs along the way, but um, you know, um, we're, we're up for it. Um, I think if we move to the next slide, Chris, um, the last thing that I wanted to say on here is just that really, you know, it's a great story that, that we sat here telling this morning. I'm really proud of that, but it all hangs off the calibre of our people, um, our team, and none of it is possible. You know, we've got great ways of working um, between um, our team and the uh, credit risk area that Simon heads. Um, you know, those two things dovetail together really nicely. 
uh, and you know, without without the commitment and the collaboration uh, of such an amazing team, none of this would have been would have been possible. We wouldn't be sat here today telling the same story. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. I guess that that's it, really. Is it? Unless okay. there's any questions for us. Yeah, we have we have a few questions. Uh, thank you very much, guys. So if you can have a virtual round of applause, well done. <laughs> brilliant. brilliant. Um, we have a question um, from um, Fran Hockley from ABB. Hi, Fran. Uh, long time no speak. Um, do, did you also identify gaps in training needs within the team? Oh, and great result on DSO, by the way. <laughs> did, you, did you identify gaps in the, in the training needs within the team during this period? Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's... Um... Well, yeah, I mean, it was one of the first gaps was we, I don't think we really understood at the beginning of it, what our, what our training gaps and mm. needs were. Yeah. Um, so hence why we're, we're trying to move now to this, um, trying to develop a tailored and bespoke um, kind of menu. This, this career program thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah. our folk can dip in and out of depending upon, you know, where they are in terms of, um, uh, of just their own skills and training. Okay. Um, another another question um that when, when when this whole lockdown business started back in the good old days of march last year when you know we used to go to the pub and stuff like that um would um it was interesting at the time we saw that there was a significant increase in in the level of um you know suddenly uh, the credit managers are all on speed dial of their finance directors and leadership teams um has has that changed over this year i mean uh, you must have been you know been constantly contacted in march and april last year has that changed throughout the year are they leaving you alone now just to get on with it or or no. what <laughs> no no, <laughs> no. um we are because we have we we were lucky in in that um, what what aided us um, through that period is most definitely has been a very aligned and very clear message um, from our CEO our CFO to our business around the importance of cash and cash cash collection and credit risk mm -hmm. um, and the the kind of focus and the framework we built around or the business put around that at that time is still in place today that is part of our that is part of the way that we continue to operate and is is part of the um the reason that we're able to sustain it with that i i think if if that level of focus starts to drift and we start to lose um lo lose anything along the way around that then then that makes things more fragile so we um we we are you know there's definitely an appetite or from our senior leadership team anyway but you know we we will be so working to keep that there. Now, compared to where you were in 2019 when we started the program with you is your organization would you say now more credit aware than it was then <laughs> yeah 100 percent 100 percent 500 percent yeah, 100%, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, I, I hope you don't mind me butting in. And Hi, Simon. This is Simon Howe from uh, from Tarmac, everybody. By the way, yeah, I've just been sitting here listening and just thinking that I'm going to take presentation lessons off off uh, Karen and Lisa. Um, <laughs> the one thing I would say that, that struck me is we've come back in January, which generally is a dead time, for, certainly within the construction industry. And the business have engaged immediately back onto it, straight back into it at exactly the same level yeah. that existed in 2020. It's embedded in what they're doing now. Uh, and certainly the, the senior management, we, Karen and I are both on a, a CEO call, which happens every Friday. We, we're now on that every, every week. Um, and that data that we're talking about, about the credit, is front and centre in that call. It's, it's actually straight after health and safety. It's about financials, cash, yeah. and, and all the elements that you've got to do uh, there. Um, so it's part and parcel of it. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, so other, another question I've got um, uh, from Brian. Um, Brian Lewis, um, he, he asks, did it, what was the impact on the customers? What, how did the customers feel about this sort of... Um, quite tough approach to collections you know you, you're due to be paid you've got to pay the bill what what, what was the reaction <laughs> mm, well there, there, there's there's a um a double-edged way of, of approaching it so it's not just about aggressive credit control it's about how we can work with you customer mm -hmm. um 
to understand your processes and to um, <laughs> get the throughput of our invoices so make this as a painless um, situation. Do you, think, do you think you've lost customers as a result or not? No. 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 Okay. One. 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 And, and the reason, there was right at the start of it, and the reason was because the message which came from the business, to not from us, from the business to the guy gave him confused what was happening and he got it took umbrage there is you know it that that was absolutely a lesson um that that about how you handle those but apart from that no mm. none. so so another question um what what would you do differently this is from damon from uh, D, D, uh, dwf law mm. um if you had if you had to do the amazing in brackets project again <laughs> Um, would you would you have done anything different? Which i.e. which buttons worked best? Um, what would we do differently? Hmm. The, there's some things I wish we had differently, <laughs> which is we've we've evolved. Um, it no the what it it evolves organically through through the period. Um, the way that we um, present data. To the business now is different mm -hmm. uh, to the way it was at the beginning of it. Um, so one of the things I do differently is is do it like we're doing it now. Mm. Um, but we, you know, you, you grow with it and, and 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 find your feet with it as you go as you go along. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there's lots of things we could we could. So, so the, the league, the league I'm, I'm fascinated about the league tables. As you know, I'm a real strong proponent of league tables. I think when we had the conversation in the workshop approach, it was received that the idea of league tables was received with a degree of scepticism, I think, um, because some people were basically um, uh, scared to do it, I think, um, and which is not unusual. Uh, most organisations think, you know, because I, I, I introduced league tables and, and we introduced league tables with, with, with all of our clients. We suggest it to all of our clients. And to be honest, we've never had um, we've never had it fail if it's done properly. It's, it's, it's never had it fail, which is good, and it, and it does generate and drive down the cash. Um, you do absolutely uh, get crossed off a few people's Christmas card lists. There's no question about that. Um, but those are generally the ones that you that that have a problem and that you need to do something about, rather than the ones that are good um, and, and are helpful. Um, but once it's you know it's a little bit like this with stakeholders, I think. You know, you, there's no point trying to convert the people that don't want to be converted. You work with the ones that are really good and positive, and those are the ones that then drag everybody else along in the end. Mm -hmm. And that's clear. That seems to have been what's happened yeah. here yeah. In, in, what, yeah. in what we've done. So that's that's really good. I was, I was really really pleased about that. And a nine day DSO reduction, that's pretty impressive. So in terms of in terms of what's what's the DSO day worth to you guys then? Well, for the business as a whole, yeah, seven and a half. Seven and a half million. Mm -hmm. So that's a significant. That's a significant for for nine, nine days. That's a significant turnaround. So that's 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 pretty impressive. Um, so any, any let's have a look. See if we've got any other um, any other questions. Uh, okay. Um, this is again from Fran. I think. Do you feel that once this crazy world is back to normal? Yeah. Good luck with that, Fran. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, business increases. Do you think there will be the same buying from the business in dispute resolution? Yeah, I do, because it, it, it's the way we do it now. So it's become business as usual? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I think the other element also, Chris, is that the business has realised that actually if they resolve disputes properly and promptly, it helps them sell stuff. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It becomes a positive, uh, you know, it's, it's a virtuous circle. You get it right, <clears throat> you become easier to deal with. Yes. Mm. yes. So there's another the, element to it, not just to do about the cash collection. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the painful a... part was the big clear out at, at the start of this exercise. <laughs> yeah. Now and like now, you're just dealing with this month's queries, or you know, so it's it's quick and easy. Yeah, and mm. that, that's true. I've, I've, it, it's interesting, isn't it? People are very concerned, but when salespeople come to, to to credit, they're very concerned. It's my customer. Don't contact them because they're upset. You're going to do something awful to them, and that's mainly because of, that's mainly because of trust. Yeah, the trust between sales and credit management. If you've got a degree of trust, which clearly what you guys have built up over this year, there's not a problem about that. And it, it's always about a degree of trust, mm -hmm. and, and it's how you manage those stakeholders. And what what you've done. 
um, looking at this, the, the, when we look at CICMQ organisations, and you know, the, the, there's a lot of them on this call now, which is which is great. Um, there's, there's generally, when you look at high performing teams, there's three things that they do exceptionally well. Yeah, three three things. Um, it is they have a motivated and engaged bunch of people working for them, which clearly you have. Yeah, based on on, on what's happened over the last year, um, you have a common cause. Yeah, they all have a common cause. They want to, and, and for you, simplifying the DSO and, and simplifying the measurement was the, exactly the right thing to do in the middle of it because that gives you a common cause. Yeah, the simpler your KPIs are and the simpler targets, and if you can have one target, which is why we always do the cash challenge on cash, nothing else, um, then, then that, that's your common cause. And, and the last thing uh, that the organisations do well that are high performing is they manage their stakeholders, which is exactly what you guys have done. Yeah. So it's 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 terrific to sort of see again, you know, all, all of these things sort of sort of align. The planets aligned, and um, and it's and it's been it's been so successful for you. It's really good. Um, so um, so you think that so it's gonna it's gonna be as as normal. Um, so um, with, with the new normal, how are you engaging and motivating the team if you're all working from home? What we've tried what. Well, <laughs> Yeah, and this is an area of focus for us, as I said, into the into this year. So by replicating, trying to replicate what we did in the office, which was um, a lot hinged around huddle meetings, etc. So we're still doing all that just remotely. Mm -hmm. it's more, it is more difficult, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. um, um, <clears throat> particularly so with management, isn't it? So is stakeholder yeah. management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just about relationships and talking to people, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, okay. I think it's also recognizing, as you do, both of you do well, to, is where in and recognizing where people do have issues and do have the problems, and picking those up and supporting those people as well, because both of you do that really, really well. Okay. Has any, anybody else um, got any questions? Um, I'll, I'll open it up if you want to um, ask the questions rather than going through chat. Just um, just give us a shout. Chris, uh, I've got a question for Lisa. Lisa, I loved your idea of um, combining all the ledgers into one. Uh, I've been doing that for years. I've got five credit controllers and we all work uh, on different ledgers. What was the what was the effect of it? I'm, I'm assuming it had a positive effect. So what was the positive? What was the effect of it when you had one ledger to look at amongst the team? It's for me. It's one go to place. Everybody can see what everybody else is doing as well. There's that openness. So we, you know, a credit controller sometimes there can be one of two things. They'll either be super competitive and want to be better than the person sat next to them. Or sometimes it will have a demotivating effect. It's like, oh, actually. Um, but by opening it up and nurturing that process, it they were all super happy with it. And one thing, the reason, probably the reason why we did it in the first place was that we were swapping and changing resource. So if somebody had a quiet day and, and, and covered their particular patch as such, they could shift to another ledger really easy, pick it up and off we go again. So... And as a management tool, and I've got I've got two of my senior credit controllers on this call today. We had that overview. We had that overview rather than having to open numpteen spreadsheets to get from A to B. So it's it's a model. It's what we mm. do now. It's brilliant. Good idea. Okay. Uh, any any other questions while we're on? Okay. Um, well, um, thanks uh, very much, Lisa and Karen, and uh, and also Simon and the and the other members of the uh, of the team that are on from um, from Tarmac. I think there's um, uh, think Claire Claire Pratt's on. She's one of the credit controllers from there as well. There's a few others on as well. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so so well done, brilliant, a really good story. And um, and and if uh, if if organisations are on this call. Um, and they um, they they're thinking about um, they, they want to sort of talk to to, to Lisa. Um, please contact um, CICMQ at CICM.com. I can put you in touch with the guys uh, anytime. Um, I'm just going to uh, stop um, stop the recording now. Um, so uh, thanks very much, uh, Lisa and, and and Karen.